for the giveaway information. Stick with us until the end of the video. Thank you! Hello folks and friends, welcome back to the factory. Today's repaint is a pretty special one. I asked my followers on Instagram what they would like to see be done in my style and I was told that gothic romantic doll would be just the thing. So today, I will make a cute custom succubus demon doll. It was my first time working on a Gigi Grand Monster High doll despite having several of them. I hope you'll like her. Like usual, she was prepped off camera and if you want to see how I do that, please check my doll prep tutorial. Link in the art card and in the description below. So, after sealing her face with MSC, I sketched her features and started on the blushing. She has a pink skin, which is very interesting, so I wanted to complement it with warm highlights and cool shadows. Gigi's face sculpt is honestly gorgeous. I love her high shape and her jawline, and she has a tiny dimple on her chin. It was really a joy to work on. I absolutely love doing contouring on my face ups, and her face was perfect for that. She's a sultry succubus, so I did not hold back on the blushing. Another thing that I personally like doing, but that I don't see all that often, is adding shadows to her jawline, right under the ears, and on the front under the chin. Just a tiny bit. I don't add too much, just in case it gets damaged when I put the head back on the body later on, but it's still a nice touch. Because yes, MSC can crack if you squeeze the vinyl head too much. This is why many artists would recommend rerouting the doll first, before doing the face up. Some colors here and there may look a bit intense, but the sealant usually dulls them a little bit. I'm still on layer 1 here and trust me, when I'll start layer 2, you'll definitely notice it. Like usual, I use makeup brushes and I try my best to lay pigment and blend it just right. I pack it on a bit heavy around the eyes too, to create a sort of smoky eye effect. I also like to add blush not only on the cheeks, but all the way up to the eye contour as well. I find it pretty and very dollish. Then, using my secret weapon, my white Derwent pastel pencil, I fill in the eyes white and add some into the irises as well, just to give me a neutral base to work on later. This is where I'm starting layer 2, after a fresh coat of sealant. Look how the colors have toned down, the white especially. It's important to remember to work in layers. Whenever the pigments stop building, add a new coat of MSC. Be careful though, because you can always add more, but you cannot remove pigment once it has been sealed, unless, of course, you want to wipe the whole face up. If you find it a bit hard to shape eyebrows, you can always use pastel to sculpt the base shape. You can then easily remove some of it, or remove them entirely and try again, so you make sure they are just right. When I feel like I'm done with most of the shading, I get my watercolor pencils out to start refining the details and filling areas like the lips and the irises. To make sure I take my time refining everything, I start with lighter colors and I work my way towards more dark and unforgiving pigments. If you make a mistake, it's easier to remove a soft brown than it is to remove black or indigo. It does not seem like much at first, but she's slowly taking shape. It's like, I mean, it's like breathing life into the doll you're making, like little by little. I was hesitating for the color of her eyes, so ultimately, I made one iris sort of minty green and the other one I went for more yellow-orange. I'll be using dark green and dark blues to shade one eye, and for the other, dark reds and browns. I personally find that going for vibrant colors, sometimes to add a bit of shading instead of desaturated options, can make some details really, really pop.
Okay, so Gigi is smiling on her face mold, but I wanted a more um, innocent, almost sad kind of expression, so I tried fighting her skull a little bit. Layers upon layers, I am defining creases and details, adding darkness and a bit of highlights here and there. Honestly, I get the best results when I'm taking my time. I'm a very impatient person, and I tend to work very quickly and sometimes I just need to pull myself back. I want to give each doll the best I can, you know. But sometimes it's just... it's just that... That passion is burning inside my veins, and yes, I'm a very intense person, yeah, <laughs> and I'm trying to give more life to my videos, but it's, it's, it's kind of hard, so uh, <laughs> if you have any feedback, I'd appreciate. Yes, well, I guess you can say I'm a little strange, I guess it's fair, but I like me the way I am, you know. Back to the face-up, well... You know things get serious when you see me pull out the black. I try to not use too much of it. I resist the temptation, I guess, despite my dark gut heart. Also, I'm judging my past self for being off-center that much. Please excuse my mistakes. At the last minute there, I decided to give her a little witchy flair, so I painted an hexagram on her forehead with some metallic paint. Then it's up to another of my favorite steps, the white paint. I use it to define some details, add texture, and of course, add some catch lights in her eyes. I use acrylics and I water them down a little so it's thinner and easier to apply. I use a tiny nail hard brush for it. After I am done with the white, I do the same with some black. I use it more sparingly though, usually mainly to define the lashes and the lash line. And that's my girl all finished. I did gloss her lips too. I don't gloss the eyes usually, but that's mainly because it makes the face really harder to photograph. Now, since I already had my stuff out, I went on to blush her body the same way I did her face. The first thing I did though was to very lightly sand her, and I say lightly because I wanted to keep the paint and the grooves on her skin intact. Then I primed her with MSC and I started with the powders. Three layers of blushing and some metallic paint later, this is my succubus's body. I was very happy with it. Then I removed her head burrito, exposing her hair. She was rerouted with white acrylic yarn, and it looks majestic. As a last-minute idea, 
I dig out some small horns that I'd made uh, with leftover epoxy skull months ago. I decided she was getting those. I decided to paint them red and had a glossy top coat. They were glued on her with a bit of super glue. I really loved her hair long, but I was not sure what to do with it actually. So I settled on curls because, well, because I like wavy and curly hair. I used the metal chopstick method, using my flat iron to eat it up. Fit. Well, I wanted to use this floral tool. I thought it would suit her well. I'm not sure if it's the right way of saying it in English, but I like controlled gathered it to space it neatly and make it feel... make it fit just right. After that, I grabbed some fake suede cord I had in my stock and decided to make her a pentagram kind of harness. To cover her top and make things a bit more cohesive, I made her a black bodysuit to wear under her skirt and harness. I simply traced her shape to make a pattern, add a bit of seam allowance, and sew that with forgiving stretchy fabric. I really started my doll journey with zero sewing knowledge, but I'm hard-headed so I tried to make things work. And that's the whole dress on the mannequin doll. I'm quite happy with the look, and I think the simple design would complement well the work I did on their body. Then, as a last minute switch, I decided the harness should be red, so I took out some paint and a tiny brush. Then, as to add a bit of detailing on the skirt, I glued some gemstones. Now on to the shoes. These are actually risen, 3D printed shoes that I received from the lovely Lady Dynamite Creates, who is a fellow doll artist here on YouTube. You can find those in her Etsy shop, link in the description below. I gave them a nice coat of acrylic paint, but they were missing a little something, and this is where I took the executive decision Cover them in glitter. I used some Elmer's glue and I covered them the best I can while trying my best to do as little of a mess as I could. Later that night, my girlfriend was sparkling despite her not getting close to my craft area. That, that's the glitter curse. After two coats of sparkles and a protective coat to seal them in with some varnish, they came out lovely. I'm not the biggest glitter fan, but that was well worth it. And with that, folks and friends, we're done. That's all I needed. The only thing left to do now is to assemble the doll. I added a snap on her top, but I decided to lace her skirt with some embroidery thread. It's still removable though. I just cannot wait to show you the final pictures.
love giving French names to my dolls, because it is my heritage after all. The name I chose for her was Severine. To enter the giveaway, listen carefully. You need to follow me on Instagram. I am hosting the giveaway on that platform because it is way easier for me to reach people through there than on any of my other social media platforms. You also need to be at least 18 years old. To participate, log on Instagram, access my giveaway post, which will be on at the release of this video, and repost the image on your own profile, tagging my page and adding the hashtag factory one k altogether. Your profile must be set to public, so I can see you have reposted the pictures. There's no need to be a doll artist or any kind of artist for that matter, as long as you are following me on Instagram. No giveaway accounts. The giveaway is open worldwide and I will cover shipping fees up to 35 to 40 Canadian dollars. I will take entries up to April 30th, 2021. I'll do my best to work things around with the current world situation, though when entering, you're also taking into consideration that some things might be out of my control. As a precaution, I'm going to say it here also, I do own a cat. So if you have severe allergies, I cannot guarantee that there won't be a single cat hair in the package. More details on my Instagram. So, what do you think of my doll? Leave me a comment below. Consider subscribing and liking the video, it really helps me a lot. In the meantime, stay safe.